Hey y'all, welcome to fifth grade, chapter 10, lesson five. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Before we do, you'll notice that I wrote this across the top. I'm gonna show you right now what that means. We remember that my King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. Kilo, hecto, deca, whatever your unit is, either liters, meters, or grams, deci, centi, and milli. So when you're going from one of them, you just count how many times you have to move the decimal. It really is that easy. This is gonna be the easiest lesson of your guys' entire chapter, okay? So we're going six, five, zero, zero centiliters. Now, if I put a decimal, it would be right there. Okay, right at the end of the number. And we're going from centi to liter. So we're going centi to liter. Remember the unit, the unit is your liters, meters, or grams, okay? So I'm moving the decimal one, two times left. One, two times left, I now have 65. It really is that easy, guys, okay? Let's do number three, 15 centimeters, if I put a decimal, it would be right there at the end, and I'm going from centi to milli. So I'm moving that decimal one time to the right. You'll notice there's not a number there. Fill it in with a zero. Done. Okay. 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 Let's go 3,200 and put my decimal in. And we're going from grams, which is a unit, to kilograms. Okay, so I'm moving my decimal one, two, three times to the left. One, two, three times to the left, 3.2. Okay, 12 liters into milliliters. Liters to milliliters. One, two, three times to the right. Fill them in with zeros. Okay, 200 centimeters, I'm gonna put my decimal in, centimeters to meters. So one, two times to the left. Done, okay? Okay. Now, you guys are gonna do seven through nine, you totally can, you're amazing. By the way, when we have a lowercase d, that is deci, okay? Deci, big D will be deca, okay? So, small d, deci, small d, deci, okay? Okay, we are gonna go down and we are gonna do number 10. Okay, and we're gonna go, doesn't really matter which way you go on these ones. Normally I say pick the bigger unit and go backwards, but since all we're doing is moving the decimal, it really doesn't matter, okay? So we're gonna start 900, put my decimal in centimeters and I'm going to millimeters. So I'm just going centi to milli, I'm moving it one time to the right, putting a decimal in there, which means these guys are equal, okay? All right, 600 kilometers or five meters. Well, meters is bigger, or sorry, kilometers is bigger than meters already, and you have more of them. That one we don't even have to do math on, okay? Now, 5,000 centimeters or five meters. So, 5,000, Put my decimal in and I'm going from centimeters to meters. So I'm moving my decimal one, two times to the left. One, two. That's 50 meters. That one's bigger. Okay. All right. You guys go ahead and do 13 through 15. We're going to go down and we're going to do 16 and 17. Okay. So Bria ordered 145 centimeters of fabric. Kayleen ordered 1.5 meters of fabric. Who ordered more fabric? Okay, so let's turn centimeters to meters, okay? 145, put your decimal in, okay? So we are going from centimeters to meters. We're moving that decimal one, two times to the left, 1.45 meters. So 
Bria was 1.45 meters and Jaylene was 1.5 meters. That means Jaylene ordered more. Okay. Okay. Ed fills his sports bottle with 1.2 liters of water. After his bike ride, he drinks 200 milliliters of water. How much is left in Ed's sports bottle? Okay. So let's turn the liters into milliliters so that we can then just subtract, okay? So 1.2, okay? And we're going from liters to milliliters, liters to milliliters. So one, two, three times, one, two, three times, okay? And then we're just taking away that 200 that he drank, which leaves us with 1,000, okay? So we could write 1,000 milliliters or we could turn it back into liters, okay? If we turned it from milliliters to liters, we would go backwards those three times. Or one liter, okay? You can do either one, you don't have to do both. Okay, so now we're gonna go over onto the back where you guys are gonna do the lesson check, just like always. And we're gonna go down and do this power review. Okay, it says Yolanda needs five pounds of ground beef to make a lasagna for family reunion. One package weighs two and a half, another weighs two and three fifths. How much ground beef will Yolanda have left over after making the lasagna? Okay. Well, you grow another piece of paper. Okay. So first we're gonna find out how much these are together. Okay. So two and three fifths and Two and a half. Okay. Well, first we need a common denominator. The smallest number they're both going to go into is 10. Okay. So okay. So in order to get five to ten, I had to multiply it by two, which means I need to multiply the top by two and I get six. Now to get two to ten, I had to multiply it by five, which means I need to multiply the top by five and I get five. Okay. So now I have four and 11 over 10. Well, that's silly because you can't have 10 over 11 or 11 over 10 rather. So 10 goes into 11 one time. And I would have one left over. So I'm going to have five and one ten. Okay. Okay. So if she needs five pounds, I'm going to take away the five pounds she needs, which means all I'm going to have left over is that one tenth. Okay. One tenth of a pound, guys. Okay. All right. A soup recipe calls for two and three quarter quarts of vegetable broth. An open can of broth contains a half a quart. How much more broth do you need to make the soup? Okay, so two and three quarters minus the one half. Okay, well, in order to get, to be able to subtract these, I need a common denominator. So I need to multiply that by two to get them both to four and then multiply that by two. So now I have two and three quarters, subtract two quarters, okay? So now the three can take away the two, so I'm still gonna have two. Three minus two is one, and my denominator stays the same. There we go, okay? All right. Which point on the graph is located at 4, 2? Well, let's go over 4 and up 2. That's S. A bakery supplier receives an order for two tons of flour from a bakery chain. The flour shipped in crates. Each crate holds eight 10 pound bags of flour. How many crates does the supplier need to ship the full order? Okay. Well, first, Let's turn the tens into pounds, okay? So we have two tons and each ton is 2,000 pounds, okay? So 
now two times two is four, and then I have those three zeros in there, okay? So that's how many pounds I need, okay? Each crate holds eight 10 pound bags. Well, that's 80 pounds. So now I need to do 80 into 4,000, okay? So eight, 80 is not gonna go into four or 40. It will go into 400. Five times, five times zero is zero. Five times eight is 40. Subtract and get zero. Now, because I ended in a zero and I only have a zero left, I can move that zero up and I get 50 crates. Done, guys. All right. Thanks for hanging out for 10.5. Come on back for 10.6. See you soon.